Hello everyone, welcome to First Code Academy. Today we're going to do a project on Roblox Studio and Code Kingdoms called Get to the Goal. In this video, I'll be explaining how to build a field for our game called Get the Goal. In video number one, we'll be go over of the design of this big field for you to kick a ball right into the flagpole. In the next part, we'll be doing the coding using Code Kingdoms. You can find a link to download Roblox Studio in the comment section down below. For the first step of our project, we need to download a game from Code Kingdoms and set it up into our Roblox Studio. To do that, we're going to scroll down from our projects or lessons all the way to My Custom Games. And we're going to click on Start a Custom Game. Then we're going to select the Base op option and type in the name of our game. In this case, I'm going to set it up as get, get the goal. All lowercase, start. In Roblox Studio, we have to remember that we need to set up at least one file. So in this case, we're going to set up the file for the ball. I'm going to call it ball. And it's an object. I'm going to add. Now we're going to start designing our game so we can code it later using Code Kingdoms. First, to make sure we have a more precise view of the editor, we're going to click on the View tab and make sure we have the four dots option selected. This allows us to have more precision when we place our blocks around the map. Next, we're going to start by building the base of our Get the Goal field. Go to Home and click on this little block over here and select the block option. This is called a part and we can insert it and move it around freely. This is gonna be the base for where our player is gonna kick the ball to the selected goal. Now that we see the goal, like the base plate, or this plate over here, we're gonna scale it. Select the scale function on home you're going to see three colored arrows. Each one of these is going to allow us to change the size of the block, either horizontally, from front to, front to back, or vertically. I'm going to leave it very flat, very narrow. Okay. I'm going to make it larger. Before we continue with the scaling, we're going to change the material so it looks more like a grass field. In this tab over here, this little atom looking button, we can select the material of the block. We're going to select the grass option. Now we have to make it a color that matches the actual material. So below that one, you can see a color selector. Choose the green that you like the most, so it looks like grass. I'm going to select this light green over here. And then what we're going to do is zoom out using the back arrow or the S key. I'm going to ex extend this block along all the base plate. So use the blue and red selector from scale. Make sure it goes all the way to the other side. If you want to change the view from Roblox Studio, make sure you, you left click on the Windows machine or double tap on a MacBook. And while holding that button, you can move around the mouse and see the entirety of the map. Once you finish extending the base plate, we're going to do something called anchoring. Anchoring means making sure the plate doesn't move at all. Doesn't matter if it's being pushed or an explosion happens, the plate will not move from its place. To anchor an object, here in the home section, there's a little anchor figure over here. Click on it and now the figure is now anchored. Now, the next thing we're gonna do is change the height of this object. To do that, 
click on the properties tab over here. If you cannot see this tab, you can go to view and select it from this option, properties. Once you open properties, you can see that there's a lot of things you can change from the base plate, from this plate we just created. There's things like position, orientation, but the one we care about is size. You can see over here, there's three values. The first one is for width, the second one is for height, and the third one is for depth or X, Y, Z. Select the Y option and change it to 20. Now that we have our grass wall, we're gonna delete the base plate that the map came with. To delete the base plate, click here on the Explorer part. If the Explorer part doesn't show for you, you can also click on View and toggle the Explorer on and off. Click on the base plate, right-click it, and press Delete. Now we only have our part. If you, you press Q and E, Q to go down, E to go up, you can see that there's no base plate anymore. It's just our grass little block, not little, big block. Now we're gonna add a wall that surrounds the entire section. Go back to home, click on part again, and click on the block. You might want to move forward so you can see it better. Click on select and drag it all the way to the border. If you make a mistake, you can always press Command or Control Z to undo any action you didn't want to do. Pull this block to the border. Now we're going to change the material so it doesn't look like this, the rest of the field. Click on the material. Now we're going to select plastic. We're going to change the color to red color. The size of this object is going to be the size of the entire field. If you take a look at the previous part, you can see that the size is around 511, 500 something. We can make it square. You can change the values to 500 and 500. You grab this block over here, put it in the border, and now we're going to select for X, we're going to put 5. For Y, we're going to put 15. And for the Z value, we're going to put 500. Now you see we created a block that should extend along the entire field. We can move it around and put it in this border. Carefully place it on the border of the screen. It's okay if, if it's not exactly on the border. As long as it creates a wall where the player cannot jump and die, that should be fine. Now, before we finish with the ed editing of this wall, make sure to anchor it so it doesn't fall down at the border. Now, to make the rest of the field, the rest of walls of the field, we can just duplicate this object. To duplicate, press Command-D on a MacBook or Control-D on a Windows machine, and you're gonna have a new part. This new part, if you don't have collision set on, it's going to be created in the exact same position as the previous one. As long as you can see that a new part has been created, you can just move it around. You see, now we have two walls. You can place it on the other border. Since the previous one was anchored, this one will be anchored as well. So don't worry about it. Duplicate it again, put it around the middle. And now we're going to use the rotate tool to make it finish the square. Move it to the desired position. Duplicate that one. Move it back. 
put it on the other side. And now we have four walls that surround our base plate. Before we continue, we continue with the next section, we're gonna add a little wall in the middle or on the middle. This one will not intersect all the way through, but scale it using the scale button to make sure the player can go from one side to the other, kind of like this. If your result is similar to this one, you're ready to continue to the next step. The next thing we're gonna add, it's a flagpole. To add the flagpole, we need to build a flag-like structure. Click on the new part button. And now we're gonna use a cylinder for the flagpole. Click on the cylinder and you're gonna see there's a little cylinder over here. We don't want it to be confused with the background of the wall since the player will probably have this view. And if you see it, the red thing is gonna be a little bit confusing where it is. So we're gonna change both the material and the color. Click on the material and select corroded metal. Click on the color and pick any color you want. I'm gonna do a yellow one. So it looks better in contrast with the background that is gonna be red. Now, if you see the cylinder, it's usually gonna be placed laying down and what it is standing up like a flagpole. Click on the rotate tool and you can use the blue one to make it stand up. Scale it. So it's a little bit tall. You can make it as tall as you want. Of course, if you make it super tall, you will not be able to see the flag. So take that into account. Add a new part, a block. And this block is gonna be our flag. Change the material. And for the material, we're gonna use the fabric. Fabric is like cloth material. So click on fabric and select a different color. Now this one, also up to you which color you want to use. I'm gonna use this very bright green. Move it next to the pole. Make sure to move around so you are more precise with your movement. You can change the views using W, A, S, D, Q, and E. Make sure the flag kind of intersects this pole. You can scale it so it looks more realistic. Now, if you look at the flag from far away, it re somewhat resembles a flag. Of course, change the color, change the properties, anything you want. It can be a different color, it can be a different position. You can make the flag go a little bit lower, a little bit higher. Mm, I somehow think the color is not exactly right. I'm gonna put it yellow as well. Okay, now that you have it, to make sure the flag doesn't fall down from the pole, remember to anchor it and anchor the pole as well. Now, if you zoom out, you're gonna look the flag standing on the left side. We can move to the right side to make it the player spawn in this position. To add a spawn location, click on view and look for the toolbox. In the toolbox, you can add any custom object made by other players. We're gonna look for the spawner. You can type in spawn or spawner if you want. You're gonna have a lot of options. Any of these is gonna make your player spawn in that location. Maybe a neutral spawn and it's gonna show up. You can close the toolbox now. You can always scale it and move it around. 
I'm gonna leave it there for now. Now, the last thing we need for our game, it's a ball, because we're kicking the ball from the spawner location all the way to the platform. To add a ball, click on part and click on sphere. Move the sphere around. I'm gonna change the material to neon. So it's gonna shine a little bit, okay? Always, you can change the color. Maybe red is not a good option, but blue or yellow are preferred. Now, the ball will not spawn at the same time as the rest of the objects. It will only spawn when the player jumps into the world. To make it so that the ball is not part of the initial setup of the game, we have to do two things. First, we're gonna rename this object, right click on it, click on rename, and we're gonna rename it as ball. Make sure it's the same ball as we put in the Code Kingdoms website. Scroll down a little bit and move the ball to server storage. You should see it should fall inside this folder. And before we continue with the coding, there's two things we need to complete. First, to make sure the game recognizes the flag. So we're gonna rename the poll as flag poll. We're gonna rename the actual flag to flag. Lastly, before, um, make sure to also anchor all the parts that are not supposed to move. For example, here, I think I forgot how to anchor. Oh, well, the natural spawn is already anchored, but make sure it's anchored when you add it. Before you continue, you can always test it out to see that it works as you intend it to work. Click on the play button. And you can always move around, see the locations. I can see the flag and the on the other side. And you might be asking, why is there no ball? There's no ball because we're gonna be adding it using Code Kingdoms. So using Code Kingdoms, you're gonna tell the program to add the ball just when we step into the game, not before and not after. Now we're ready to go to Code Kingdoms and start coding. So that's it for today. Thanks for watching and I hope you enjoyed this project. If you wanna see more of this, click like and subscribe to our channel. Bye bye.